Golf is a game that you either like or you don't. There's no in between. If you love the game, you, you really go after it. But if you don't like it, you don't play. And it's still the same. But uh, the minute I started caddying, I liked the game. And it let us play on Mondays up there. And then I started going out to pick it on. And uh, I started playing pretty serious at that time when I was about 13 or 14 years old. And I played in all the local amateur tournaments around here and won, you know, some of them. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the National Junior was a, a big title for me. I think I was the first uh, Kentucky to ever win a national championship when I was 17 years old at, at Congressional in Washington, D.C. But that's how I really got my start. And the game of golf was natural to me. I've never had a golf lesson in my life. I went to uh, Lindley uh, grade school out on Leastown Pike. And I was playing football out in the uh, yard and a big boy fell on my arm, broke my arm. I still have a loose a floating bone in here. And that's why, it, to get in that position, it hurts, hurts me to swing. So I had to let my arm fling, and it's the best thing ever happened to me because it, it swung, a good swing is one that repeats. And I, I had a figure eight swing, and everybody made fun of my swing, calling me a whirly bird and all this, you know. But, you know, I've seen guys on the practice team swing perfect on the practice tend to go to the first in the ball goes over there or over here but this swing of mine would would repeat for me about every time and of course Miller Barber now Jim Furyk and Nicholas had a right, flying right elbow uh, some of the other guys do too but uh, to me a good golf swing is one that repeats they asked me if I would caddy for him I said well sure I'd be glad to and later on, we became pretty good friends. I played a lot with Ben. In fact, I, when I won the Masters in 60, 60, well, he gave me a driver in 66, and I got beat in the playoff. Uh, Nicholas uh, and uh, Tommy Jacobs and I were in a 66 playoff at the Masters, and, and Jack beat us. Then I came back and won it with that driver that Ben gave me. But uh, after I won the National Junior, uh, they called me and asked me if I'd come to Memphis and play an exhibition with Ben. Uh, people don't realize this, but Arnold Palmer and Gene Littler and Billy Casper pulled a trailer down the highway back then. And we all turned pro about the same time. Palmer was 54 and uh, Littler was 55 and Casper and I turned pro in 56. But we all traveled by car and uh, we'd have get togethers and we still get along. I mean, everybody's, it's a big family and now all the kids are older and you know, 50 and 45, 50 years old. But it's a big family, and we all got along great. We were on the 67 and 73 Ryder Cup team, and we, ben, was our, ben Hogan was our captain in 67, and uh, Jackie Burke was our captain in 73. But in 67, we played the champions in Houston, and 73, Muirfield in Scotland. And they paired Casper and I together always in the best ball, or an alternate shot, and we never lost a match. We won every time that we played. We just teamed it so well together. And then, of course, we won the Legends uh, of Golf in, in uh, Austin, Texas, at Onion Creek. So, but we've been friends for years, you know. But I got even with him at the Alcan at St. Andrews. We tied after 72 holes, and I beat him in a playoff. And the first place then was 55,000, and second place was 15,000. So, was big money. yeah, that was, a, that was the highest first place check in golf at that time. Palmer, uh, Nicholas, and Player, the big, they called it the big three. You know, I was the guy that busted them up. Uh, I won in 67. It broke their string. The, all, the three of them kept winning every year. And then once I bust them up and uh, won in 67, in, uh, uh, then the other guys started winning at that time. But uh, they were three com real competitors, those guys. I mean, they, they deserved to be the top three. Uh, I, it, it took me five years, actually, to break in. Uh, some guys, it takes a year or two, some 10 years. You never know until you get out there. I used to be embarrassed if I hit a bad shot. You know, I had a little complex about uh, not hitting the shot, and I found out that everybody don't hit every shot. So you gotta hit it and go find, go find it and hit it again. And when I got through with that, uh, learning that, it helped my game quite a bit.
Well, you know, the ambition of a golf professional is to win one or all four of the major championships. I had my chance in 66, and I, and I three put the 18th hole on Sunday, and, and it caused a three-way playoff. But what that did for me, it gave me confidence that I could play that golf course. And I came back the next year and won it. I just felt like I was going to win it. But uh, that's the biggest thrill I've ha ever had in golf, you know, winning that. It's just something that uh, uh, you don't realize it, that you won until a couple of days later. It hits you all of a sudden. I remember John Y. Brown, I had him down, he and his wife as my guest. At, uh, we always rented a house there. And he followed me every hole, you know. And of course, he was on our golf team at Lafayette High School here, and then also Kentucky. John John White was a pretty good player back then. And uh, after I won it in '67, we we went back to the house to have dinner. And he says, "Brewer, you know what you just did?" And I said, "What's that, John?" He says, "You just won the Masters." And of course, I was on on cloud nine, and it didn't it didn't hit me until about Tuesday. The next, I said, "I won the tournament," you know. But I had my mind so so much focused on uh, winning that golf tournament. And the uh, week before that, Norman Vincent Peale came out with a book, uh, Power of Positive Thinking. I read that book. And I remember on Sunday, I sat down out on the lawn at Augusta National by myself about an hour meditating, just thinking, you know. And when I got through, I just, I went right to the tee and I was ready to go and I wrote I wrote uh, Norman Vincent Peale a letter thanking him, you know, for writing that book. And later on, he made a comment in another book that I had read his his book about power of positive thinking. It really helped me. Uh, of course, once you learn how to play, concentration is the name of the game. And you've got to concentrate to, to really play well. When I first started playing golf, I was told to use a straight left arm down to the club head. Now, what that is, that's an angle. And your knees had to leave you into the shot to come back to that position that way. Now, we always knew that angles causes hooks and slices, but we didn't know how to cure it. And there was a simple little move, a little thing that you do to clear that. You need to get a relief in this left wrist, a little cup in here, and set it more center toward the navel with the butt of the club. And what that does, that balances you here. Now see, when I put my hands there, it puts my weight forward and everything, and your tempo's gotta be perfect to play from that, that angle there. So if you get relief here and get a little cup in here, it sets you right in position to where you can use the arm, shoulders, and the back muscles, the big muscles in the swing. When power golf came into Oh, 25 years ago, that's what they meant about power golf. You can't use power golf and play it from there. You go to the here, it squares you up and does everything for you. Now all you got to do is control, see the, the shots are controlled with the left hand. In other words, if I want to hook the ball, I get a stronger grip in here. If I want to fade it, I get a weaker grip there. Or a pretty straight shot, straight up and down the shaft. But you play from the center of your body with the butt of this club, with relief in this left wrist. You can't get it there and really play. You watch on the tour, some of these guys don't, don't know that, still play that way and they're very inconsistent. But all you good players play with relief here where you can hit with the big muscles and that's where they've start, started getting all this distance with this new equipment and everything. But uh, again, it, needs, it takes practice. And uh, if you want to hook the ball, see the golf is a game of opposite. If you aim to the right, the ball will go left. If you aim to the left, the ball will go right. Depending on your grip, you know, of course your left hand, as I say again, controls the shot. So if you want to hook the ball, aim out there at the right, and let that toe roll this way. And what this does, it puts you right through the shot and gets you to the left side. I see a lot of guys do this, you know, and that's trying to guide the ball. But this, you, the weight's got to transfer this way, and if you throw, roll that toe this way, you can get to the left side automatic and you'll hit a draw. Or even if you're trying to fade the ball, you aim, aim out to the left, and again, it's, your weight, weight transfers, and uh, you use the, this, the uh, alignment, the position, 
to where you want to hit the ball and with your left hand controlling. Well, it, this was, I had this club job in, in Palm Springs and I was about ready to, uh, to, to go on the senior tour. And my assistant pro there was Blair Klein. He'd gone to school with Freddie and Freddie's having a problem. Uh, in fact, he's all about, about to lose his, his card on the tour. So he asked me if he called Freddie if, if I could work with him. I said, sure, bring him in. And I didn't know him very well at that time, you know. And, uh, in fact, I'd never met him. But Freddie come over and we went on the practice tee. And he's, he could hit it 320 yards, but he, he was pretty wild at the time, you know. And he played, he played from an angle here. And I said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I told him just exactly what I told on the film there to get relief here. I said, remember your name, Couples. Cup this. Cup it. He said, what? Well, he always come across the line over here, and with a, with a strong grip, he'd liable to hit it anywhere. And I worked with him uh, two days, and he goes up and wins Hartford the next week. And he, every time I see him, he thanks me for it, because you'll see him how much he cups it in here, always, with every club in the bag. And the more you cup it there, the further it'll go right. So you gotta, if you cupped it too much, you gotta try to hook it to hit it straight. But this was a good lesson for him, and he still does it. I mean, he'll never forget that, you know. That's, a, that's one of the most powerful things I ever learned in golf, is to get this relief in this left wrist. It's all a confidence deal. I had my own type of swing, and I remember Bobby Craig's from Louisville Country Club, the old pro Scotsman. He says, don't ever let anybody change your swing. He said, stick with what you got and you'll be a winner, which uh, I, I took that advice uh, seriously, you know.